Oh, so fast. <laughs> It all depends on good ability of driving and uh, endurance. Apart from getting covered in sand, which appears to be an occupational hazard, the marshals have a vital role to play. The rally route is divided into a number of special stages, which are repeated throughout the event. On these stages, competitors are set off at minute intervals, and their time recorded at the finish using digital timing equipment. First one, 12, 26, The route is issued by the organizers in the form of a road book. This is a series of diagrams and junctions indicating to the crew at appropriate distances which is the correct road. If you are not following the correct route, it is unlikely you are going to have the fastest time on the stage, and after all, that is what the rally is all about. The competing cars are varied, but generally show an increase in preparation as a result of experience gained in the previous three years. While many crews have traveled from other Arab countries, the majority are from Kuwait itself, in some cases competing in their first event. Will it be one of these newcomers who emerges to topple the establishment? If enthusiasm alone was the winning ingredient, the answer would surely be yes. After the first two stages, the leader is the favorite, Roger Taylor, winner of two previous Kuwait rallies. Well, we've got a modified engine, modified suspension. We're putting out 90 brake horse, this little piece. The Honda may look relatively standard. Don't let it fool you. Underneath it all lies a wolf in sheep's clothing. Bill Murphy, in car number two, has brought his beautifully prepared Volvo from Saudi Arabia. The car is heavy, but 20, 2,300 pounds. So it goes up, it comes down. <laughs> At a hell of a rate. Now he's 10 seconds behind the leader. The car that has created the greatest local following is undoubtedly the BMW of 23-year-old Kuwait driver Tarek Wazar. The BMW is relatively standard and the demanding route is going to test its reliability to the limit. Wondering how their Renault will stand up to the course, the Asfars, a husband and wife team. This time we are very standard, but it's still a very normally strong car and it might have a chance. I hope so. I know I have a good suspension here. It's going very good, but you know, it's the ordinary car, not specially prepared. It is driving like this that tests any specially prepared car, let alone an ordinary one. The car's not quite fast enough, but uh, she's very reliable and very strong. We're hoping to finish. And to finish in the top six would mean a win in the Rothmans Middle East Rally Championship. At speeds like this on a desert track demands lightning reactions on the part of the driver. The car is constantly jumping and sliding its way across the sandy surface, leaving the casual observer gasping in amazement. stage and Roger Taylor scorches to a stop.
The Volvo is holding second place, 27 seconds behind. Bill Murphy and Vincent Labatt will have their work cut out to catch the Honda now. Race coming up. Stay right. Watch the bump. Road bends right. One wonders what persuades two people to undertake such a challenge. During their working week, Bill is a Volvo technical director, while Vincent is the personnel manager of the bank. And these varied and contradictory backgrounds continue throughout the field of 56 entries. Sorry about that, team. How much punishment can a motor car take? What is the braking point for suspension, tyres and engine? The constant choice between speed and caution is what rallying is all about. Passage controls check that competitors are following the correct route. The marshals have to hand the navigator a card when they can manage it. takes its toll. Six stages are over when Roger Taylor hits carburetor problems. He is forced to retire, leaving Bill Murphy's Volvo to set the pace. first day, competitors are on the eighth stage out of a total of 16. Behind them are 400 kilometers of relatively smooth tracks. Ahead of them, the terrain is going to get a lot tougher. At the end of the first day, results are produced swiftly merely an accumulation of the various special stage times and Bill Murphy has established himself as a man to beat. You gave it a bit of a blast on the last section and then caught a slower BMW and had to go off the track to pass it and hit a bump and got crossways and turn around. And so where are you now? Where are you placed? We're first now, according to this. All the times are not in. First or second. First on that, but there's one time missing. We don't know. Just waiting. <laughs> and see what happens. Tarek Wazan in the BMW is his nearest rival, but it is still far too early to tell how much he has in reserve. Everyone realizes that we haven't yet reached the halfway stage. There's still a long way to go. But everything is going good. Is it? Yes, not bad. Better than last year? Of course, better. Much better. In the third position, the Asfars are finding it tough going. Tough, yes. Can break a lot. So we intend to keep it cool like that till the end. And uh, as we say here in Kuwait, inshallah. The Kuwait water towers are the impressive scene of the evening halt.
This is the first year that a night section has been incorporated in the rally. Many feel that the notorious desert tracks are far too difficult to navigate in the dark. There is an uncertainty experienced by everyone at the thought of 200 kilometers of night stages ahead of them. The countdown begins. Bedouin tracks weave their way into the darkness in an infinite maze, which forms a deceptive trap for the unwary. The few landmarks have disappeared into darkness. The navigators are forced to rely heavily on the accuracy of the halder, and memory is all important as bumps and potholes rush towards the sudden glare of spotlights. three o'clock in the morning. The night has passed with little incident and Bill Murphy still maintains his lead. Tarek Wazan holds second place, but his BMW has developed prop shaft problems. A question mark hangs over the hopes of the local hero as his mechanics work through the night. But for the drivers, a well-earned rest. I think for us the night section was the most grueling, so we're a little happier today. We should be faster here than we were in Silabir, but it's a windy track and it's, it's quite easy to long, long slot here, but of course that applies to everybody. I don't want it, I want to come back! It has been a long and tiring night for everyone, and today will be a test of stamina for both man and machine. The pressure is only just beginning as competitors venture into a far more rugged terrain. Already we have lost 20 of the original entry, an indication of the severity of the route, and many more will fall by the wayside before the day is over. Bill Murphy now holds a slender lead of one minute over Tarek Wazan, one puncture and the advantage could so easily swing in favour of the local driver. After extensive work by his service crew, the BMW appears to be back in fine order again. After borrowing this standard Renault from a very trusting friend only a week before the rally, the Asfars now hold a strong third place. Simpson has had a number of problems with his Avenger on previous events this year. He is never out of contention this time, with the car performing impeccably. Mike Foss and Rod Oliver are driving a very mature rally, with their sights firmly set on winning the championship. A finish is far more important than any heroics. A mistake at this stage would waste a year's efforts. The rally is now 24 hours old, 
and has inflicted its toll on many cars who are limping along at the back of the field. Opportunities for overtaking are few and far between, and, as in this case, often take several attempts. Well, we, we came around the right-hand corner, as right on cue, down the end, shouted gully, and we hit the gully. And we weren't supposed to, we were supposed to turn left. Well, you can see the position of the wheel, the wishbone's bent, and it's just pushed it right back. We'd have carried on, only the thing was fouling on the, fouling on the bodywork. We couldn't push the bodywork back any further. But he was going, he was going like a dream. So you're out. We're finished, yeah. Pity. Bill Murphy, driving with great authority, has extended his lead to 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Tarek Wazan and John Spiller's BMW is holding an uneasy second place. They have lost nearly a minute on the leaders and their prop shaft is beginning to give trouble again. Hot on Tarek's tail come the Asfars. They have shaved 25 seconds off his lead. Ian Simpson's Avenger lying fourth, less than a minute behind and still in strong contention. The more sandy parts of the route present quite a problem for the navigator who forgets to close his window. This BMW boasts numerous aerodynamic aids, which it would appear must be of more benefit on the higher speed sections of the route. Unlike so many others, he did, however, finish. Bill Watt is upholding Honda Honor with a position inside the top half dozen. Bedouin Haji trucks amble along the desert tracks unaware of all the activity around them. Luck is on the side of Hani Hamid. Others have to wait. After all, he is following a traditional route he has used for years and there is no reason why today should be any different. Is there? <laughs> Late afternoon, and by now the retirements outnumber the survivors. The salvage operation begins. Tarek's BMW shows signs of a repetition of the prop shaft problems that plagued him during the night. The mechanics check everything meticulously as retirement so close to the finish would be such cruel luck. As for Bill Murphy, with victory so precariously close, who is he frightened of most? Frightened of myself, Mark. <laughs> so far, so good. A slight water leak, but it seems to be holding out all right. And uh, well, it's a long way to go, it's any trouble. 
It's a long way around that second stage, and I'm just hoping the water will stay in. And stay in it did, giving Ian, who had had his fair share of bad luck this year, fourth position overall and team captain of the winning Bada Al Mullah team. A well-deserved finale to a year of bitter disappointments. For Mike Foss and Rod Oliver, fifth overall was good enough to win the Rothmans Middle East Rally Championship. A calculated drive from the outset proves them very worthy champions. To finish the Kuwait Rally in a standard car deserves praise in itself. To finish third overall demands a unique combination of both car and crew. The Asfars are among the most experienced rally teams in the Middle East. Even in a car borrowed a week before the event, they are a force to be reckoned with, and their third position is an incredible performance. All was close, but never quite close enough. Tarek Wazan and John Spiller finished second in the BMW. At only 23 years of age, Tarek has many more rallies ahead of him. And with driving of this caliber, that elusive victory cannot be denied him for much longer. To command is an unenviable task in any business. To command the lead of a rally virtually from start to finish requires a combination of restraint and determination which few can ever master. It is not others' weaknesses but your own strength that will win the day. And it's Bill Murphy's fear of himself that provides the key to his inevitable victory. Victory can only rarely be described as inevitable. It is, however, always well deserved, and none more so than Bill Murphy and Vincent Labatt, winners of the 1978 Rothmans Kuwait International Rally. A fitting end to an exciting event. In the reception at his palace, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah Al Jaber presents trophies to the winners. The fourth Rothmans International Rally is over, but the prestige of motorsport continues to grow in the development of Kuwait's commitment to sporting achievement. Every day it's getting better and bigger.